The announcement that John Boehner would be resigning as the speaker was met with cheers from the right. And I don't mean metaphorical, literal cheers when it was announced at the Value Voters Summit by Marco Rubio, as you're going to see in this clip. Just a few minutes ago, Speaker Boehner announced that he will be resigning. Yeah! <laughs> Look at that. That's awesome. Yeah, he didn't uh, he didn't quite see that coming. But that's why. So when the <laughs> Tea Party says that the Tea Party is promising to unite behind one candidate, I think they will. There has been such a desire to get in the way of Boehner and get in the way of Mitch McConnell. The the they really feel like <laughs> those guys are liberal sellouts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these are crazy people. Uh, so my hunch is that there may be some infighting to get there. But they will probably unite behind one Tea Party or slash mm -hmm. far, far, much further right than Boehner guy, yeah. and that'll be somebody likely further right than, than Kevin McCarthy, who's pretty, pretty far to the right. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's interesting that I mean he's obviously he's been he's getting shit now. He's been getting shit for years because he will often you know sort of buck what the the more radical I guess. Uh, uh, section of the party wants to work with some Democrats to to actually get some legislation passed with with President Obama. So he gets crap for working with Obama. We have given Obama crap uh, throughout the entire time that, that he has been president for the same reason. The reason I don't think that we're necessarily being hypocritical in thinking that we are right in this is that I do, while they are working together, I do think that the outcome is is less what we were promised by Obama when he was running and more the the sort of realistic outcomes that the right should expect. Look, let's not, this is, let's not frickin' fucking go crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Let's, first of I all, let's crazy, curse like know. a grown-up, okay? okay? What did I say? I said oh. frickin' and then frickin' <laughs> okay. before I could get out the word fuck. Mm -hmm. uh, they're angry with Boehner and McConnell for capitulating on things like not shutting down the government and the debt ceiling. That's true. These yeah. are things we didn't think rational people would argue with, you can't not raise the debt ceiling. Yeah. You can't default. So we're upset because pieces of legislation, things like financial reform, all these mm. important pieces of legislation, like the health care bill, all these things that we thought would be more progressive are fairly right-wing bills. The, the, That's the, exactly the, what the I'm saying. The health care law is, a, is their idea, was mm -hmm. their idea in the 90s or the 80s. So... So, the, so it's not. We know we're not being hypocritical. Just because both sides think that their leadership has capitulated too much to the other side doesn't mean both sides are the same amount right or wrong. Exactly. Yeah. They're out to lunch. Yeah. And we're not. Yeah. In this case. <laughs> uh, okay. I do want to get a, a little bit more of uh, some of the reactions. Some of these are going to be, I guess, at the very least, polite, if not uh, out, outright respectful for John Boehner. But there are a lot of people, as in the video with Marco Rubio, who are very happy to see him go. Uh, here is uh, Heritage Action saying, Americans deserve a Congress that fights for opportunities for all and favoritism to none. Too often, Speaker Boehner has stood in the way. Today's announcement is a sign that the voice of the American people is breaking through in Washington. Now is the time for a principled conservative leader to emerge. Not like that goddamn socialist John Boehner. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Ted Cruz was quoted as saying, I have long called on Republican leadership to do something unusual, which is lead. That's I, perhaps true in some sense. What he has called on them to do is to stop the very small amount of actual work that gets done in Congress these days. He wants to shut down that that the, the occasional drip drops of legislation that we get. Just really quick, we, we don't mention enough that when Ted Cruz was running for the Senate, his website uh, talked about that uh, UN plan. I don't remember the number. The ho uh, that was gonna agenda 21. Yeah, Agenda 21 that was going to create hobbit homes. That was going to force everyone it out. It was going to outlaw the, golf courses. Outlaw golf courses and force everyone out of their homes and move them into the cities where they would live in hobbit homes. Yeah. President of the United States, Ted Cruz. I'm sorry. Yeah. By the way, it, the hobbits didn't live in cities. So <laughs> I find that to be offensive as a nerd, actually. They were quite rural. Uh, anyway, okay, we've got Eric Erickson. Uh, Boehner's problem is that he held more and more of his own party in the House in contempt. In the end, it wasn't just the conservatives who felt shut out and unable to do business with Boehner. Everyone else did too, so Boehner had to go. 
Let's see, uh, Gun Owners of America, uh, we were saying in our production meeting this morning, uh, we had not known how anti-gun Boehner apparently was, but they say your grassroots activism has paid off. Speaker John Boehner is on the way out of Congress. John Boehner, by the way, keep that graphic up there. John Boehner had suggested that everyone with a gun turn in the gun for a giant mallet. Exactly, and yeah. they will not be disarmed yeah. in that way. Yeah, gavels, Americans. We can fight the the invade <laughs> when the federal the, the federal forces get so big that they're dangerous. Americans will you just, just come gavel out. them, right? Yeah, uh, bring bring like you know, a mole. I bring you to order. Yeah. Yeah. It's just one federal agent after the next. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. Uh, we've got a, an awesome graphic by Freedom Works. You helped oust Boehner as House Speaker. I don't know exactly how you'd know that you had helped out, but I think a lot of people will just retweet it because of the, the tears in his eyes. Uh, let's see. Uh, we've got an account of what Trump apparently has said. I think it's wonderful, frankly, after he was reminded who John Boehner was. Uh, I think it's good. It's time. He's done a lot of thinking about that. How come he didn't call him a loser? <laughs> exactly. Such a I prefer speakers who don't quit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and yet he gets along very well with Sarah Palin. Uh, why don't we turn now to someone who is going to be a little bit nicer to John Boehner. Here is the president. John Boehner is a good man. He is a patriot. He cares deeply about the House, an institution in which he's served for a long time. He cares about his constituents. Uh, and he cares about America. Uh, you know, we have obviously had a lot of disagreements, uh, and politically we're at different ends of the spectrum. But I will tell you, he has always conducted himself with uh, courtesy and civility with me. He has kept his word when he made a commitment. Uh, he is somebody who uh, has been uh, gracious, and I think maybe most importantly, he's somebody who understands that in government, in governance, you don't get 100% of what you want, but you have to work with people who you disagree with, sometimes strongly, in order to do the people's business. I mean, I mean there's things that would never, the reverse would just never get said. Boehner might say it, but I mean, most Republicans serving would never say those little obvious mm. things about the president, right? Right, no, I would agree with that. I've, my, what, what strikes me here is the dysfunctionality, and I have to, I kind of have to put my put my sort of European glasses on a little bit when I mm. look at oh Europe, you're no, <laughs> that's right, it's European, I think British, right? I was thinking, I knew it, Pacific I get it, Northwest. I knew I would get it eventually. No, it's British, right? Okay. But I, I, it, it just what strikes me is it, it's how dysfunctional everything is, and I know that's mm. an obvious thing to say, and it's been said, at, but these, the checks and balances lead to complete paralysis, mm -hmm. and it, it, it epitomized, I think, by, by this resignation. It's epitomized by the reaction. It's epitomized to, to what I've been listening to you guys speak about, the fact that you seem to be suggesting that really the far right is now going to define the Republican Party in this way. Yeah. It's just so fundamentally troubling, and I think that it contributed to his to his his forced resignation because they won so colossally in the in, in the in the elections, and then they still felt that they could they were you know there was a log jam, yeah, and so it just all starts to it just starts to break down, and that's when you get someone like Donald Trump. Now I know we're going to come to exactly. him in a minute, but no, that's, but that's yeah. exa but, it's exactly right. Yeah, Donald Trump came from this atmosphere, this way of talking, this yeah. manner of speaking, this from 30 years in this country, which must, again, shock Europeans, 30 years of saying, oh, don't, read the, don't read the papers, don't look, they're all lies, everything's a lie, everything you're told is a lie, and when they tell you that that's crazy that I'm lying, no, that's the ultimate lie. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, that's the result of this. And, yeah. and so the next time, again, that somebody suggests that some theoretically do-gooding third wayer like, oh, let's just bring people together. Mm -hmm. I'd love to bring people together. One side won't do it under any circumstances. Yeah. So so then the other side should stop saying, please. Yeah. Like you can't, if they won't, if the world, if the Republican Party were filled with guys like John Boehner, I get it. We'd still have a, like Wall Street would still dominate and it would still be an unfair system and it would be rigged against everyday Americans. But they'd make deals. They get right. stuff done. Yeah. John Boehner yeah, is and they a have, yeah. they have from time to time. We have very rarely actually liked the deals that they have that they have had, but the limited amount of uh, of bills that have actually passed Congress have generally required Boehner to do what Boehner does, um, which I suppose in some cases is better than nothing at all. 
to what extent do you think that the, the, the failures of the Obama administration, the disappointment that we've all felt with that, mm -hmm. have that been produced as, as a result of this uh, dislocation? Or is it just the fact that when you get into power, it's one, it's one thing to run, it's another thing to govern. Yeah. And actually when you get in, you realize how difficult it is. And then you pull the side and you say, well, you can't really do that. Well, this isn't going to work. Or is it the fact that it's, it's not about ruling, it's about the, this dysfunctionality? Yeah. Well, I think that... I think that some part of it is simply that our expectations were just too high. He's not a superhero, regardless of what political uh, context he finds himself in once he's actually the president. But I would say that whatever it is that he would have theoretically been able to accomplish as president, he would have had more of it had we re had the Democrats retained control of both houses of Congress. And I think that many people could make the case, it's impossible to know, but we'd make the case that if he had been more aggressive when the Democrats were in control, they could have theoretically stayed in control. And it's it's very easy and probably accurate to say that the, the Republican-led most important gridlock, uh, fucking Trump, always interrupting. <laughs> yeah. Dick Trump. He had something um, to say, John. Yeah, he did. He does, uh, he has an opinion. It's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. Yeah. That's uh, stupid. But, but he can hide behind gridlock now, and, and he's right. He's not going to be able to get most bills through Congress, but it didn't necessarily need to end up this way. I think that uh, here I'll sound like a left-wing third way. Mm -hmm. Third way is an organization in Washington that yeah. theoretically tries to bridge a gap that they pretend that, want, that both sides want to bridge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, but if you're a lefty third wayer, that I think that the 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 real diehard uh, Bernie Sanders supporting progressives, of which I am one, mm -hmm. um, uh, sometimes make the mistake of ignoring what Elliot was talking about and the, what we've all been talking about here. That that hey man, don't don't forget to blame the people who deserve most of the blame. Yeah, here, that's true. Which yeah. is these these guys are crazy and they will not negotiate and they want to do things like not raise the debt ceiling. And they have made life impossible for a, for the person with whom Obama was supposed to negotiate with John Boehner, right. like, and so we put not nearly enough blame on them. Mm -hmm. uh, conversely, uh, uh, very blind Obama defenders in the Democratic mm -hmm. Party, he's not who you thought he was. He just isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Regardless a, of context, he is a not. he is a far more moderate, sober governor than the man who we thought we were electing in 2007 yeah. and 2008. Yeah, but to your point, he's a pragma he, he has to be pragmatic. I don't think we can be too, I mean, it's one thing to have these wonderful ideas in, a, in an intellectual bubble and you get 250,000 people at the Brandenburg Gate or wherever it was when he was just, when he was a senator and he was running. Yeah. And that is too, again, it was never gonna meet those expectations, but at, at the same mm. time, he has to be pragmatic. He yeah. does have to and be I pragmatic. Think, I, I would as say- As anybody does. He does, I, I think that we, we learned that he was he was he was very quick to be pragmatic, and for a long time it took till the second till his second term for him to finally start recognizing these guys aren't going to play along with me. Rather so, than wasting his time. So I mean, he wasted. Water. He burned yeah. a lot of political capital. He wasted a lot of time, and I don't think he cared that much about things that we thought he was yeah. going to care about. Yeah. But I still go back to at first the most of the blame for the direction of the country is over there on the yeah. far right.